does this work? Do I start or do you, uh, <laughs> you start with Either way is fine. If you want to open with a statement, or we, we can defer ask. you. No, I was saying this, you know, and I don't mean for this to sound cliche by any means, but in situations like this, it's like your program's culture, right? Like they come forward. Um, and I thought our guys, you know, certainly coach being out, but, but you guys know how important Felix is to our team. And I thought guys stepped up. Our togetherness, you know, specifically on the defensive side was, was high level. Um, we played with physicality, we played with toughness, and those are things we, we talk about being about on a daily basis. And so to see that come to fruition, you know, for, for really consistency, right, throughout the course of the game was really encouraging. But we talked about it before the game, it's about the culture of this program, you know, and um, I'll say this, right, there's not a better guy to work for than Chris Holman when it comes to like preparing to be a head coach. <laughs> Certainly wasn't preparing to be a head coach tonight, <laughs> but um, you know, his, in his way and how he enables us to grow, you know, as you know, within his staff is, is something you know we all feel grateful to be a part of, a part of this program because he's he gives us the right ability to do that. Um, so you know he told me I told him before I guess the last time we did this you gave me at least a, a, some time to prepare. So I'm a little nervous. He said you'll be all right. Just be yourself and you know listen. It's this is a, a player's game. It's a player's led program. And I thought our leadership was really good. What was the first thing you did when he, he told you, you know, you'd have to be coaching tonight? I called my wife. Yeah, I called my wife. Um, she didn't answer because I got three kids under five. And um, but no, I, I, I told her, and you know, my mom and dad. And my dad uh, didn't answer because he's still coaching. But I was able to talk to him just before heading out uh, when the game started. So just leaned on family a little bit. Obviously, I want to ask you a bit about the game too. Uh, just thoughts on Zed's performance tonight. I uh, thought he gave you a lot, and you know the, the four dunks obviously huge for momentum. But you know, uh, I mean, just yeah, a really big uh, way to step up without Felix. Absolutely, um, and I think probably equally impressive was his ability to stay engaged despite foul trouble. You know, I thought he did he did a really good job. He certainly could have um, got into himself you know, with the fouls, but he didn't flinch. He kept playing physical, um, did a good job on the glass, and his efficiency inside was important, specifically when we were certainly struggling making shots here for a stretch. Uh, how's Bruce? Yeah, so Bruce was actually cleared to go back into the game at that at that point in time. We just didn't feel like it was the, the best thing to do. Outside of that, don't have a lot of other details, but, but he was cleared to go back in. So um, how did you have to shift up some responsibilities with one fewer, you know, coach on the sidelines? Did, did other people have to fill in things or did it just kind of everyone keep doing what you're doing? Yeah, we tried to keep um, keep things mostly the same. Obviously, it was a different voice addressing the team for the bulk of the game. But, you know, people probably couldn't notice it a great deal. But there, there is there's real chemistry within our staff. And, um, I thought, I, at least for me, that gave me great comfort. I felt like things flowed uh, really well. You know, Coach Nettie um, became probably a little bigger voice offensively to help with that. And, uh, Coach Bailey and Coach Owens, you know, were, were locked in as, as usual defensively. Uh, we tried to just be really organized in timeouts. And um, I felt like, you know, and I think our guys felt like, you know, we were, we were, it was kind of seamless. Uh, you guys get out, only make five of your first 21 shots, I believe, and you're behind with six minutes to go in the first half. Just uh, what were they doing perhaps to maybe frustrate you guys a little bit on the offensive end and, and made it a little bit more difficult? It seemed like you were getting decent enough looks, just couldn't get anything good to the basket. Yeah, I think we, we missed some good looks, certainly, but I felt like Defensively, they're switching and kind of, you know, attacking our dribble when we were driving were, gave us some problems. Um, and to be honest, we didn't play fast enough. You know, we didn't change ends 
uh, quickly enough. We talked about taking advantage of transition. We talked about playing with, with great pace and doing it consistently throughout the course of the game. And we didn't do that to start, but I think you saw when we did uh, how we were able to open things up and, and capitalize. Yeah, I think Jamison got hot and hit a couple threes there to kind of get you guys going. Just uh, maybe chipped away and, and you break through what were the keys maybe the last five minutes and a half where there was much better flow. Do you think it was ball movement or what, what was going on at that point? Ball movement and lack of turnovers. You know, there was a point we had six turnovers and I don't remember the exact time left in the half, but we went the rest of the half without a turnover. So that's important for us. We know that's an area we have to continue to get better at. Um, and I felt like their design defensively was to put us in a little bit more isolation than um, you know maybe what we want to, because our assist numbers have been really high all season long, and it's an important part of the way we play. So we got away from that a little bit early, and you know taking care of the ball is always going to be important for us offensively. Uh, but we were able to kind of sustain things, I thought, because we did a good job on the glass, and that's th those two things: taking care of the ball and being aggressive. Uh, on the glass are, are important for us offensively so we can you know we can um, be successful even when we may not be shooting as well as we're capable of. Tonight and also in the UCLA game it seemed like even though the offense really didn't start clicking until the second half it doesn't seem like any misses on the offense ever carry over to the defense like your defense against UCLA and tonight was constant throughout even if shots weren't falling. How important is that for those guys to understand that they can always fall back on that? It's really important, and I think it speaks to the leadership of this team. Uh, it's important to Bruce Thornton, it's important to Roddy Gale, it's important to the guys who you know, have been in this program, and it's, it's become important to the guys who came into this program this year. So uh, our consistency on that end is, has improved, there's, there's no doubt about it. It's gonna be important for us moving forward as when we come back from break, but it's important to our leadership. So I think that's been, a big reason why we've grown and we've been able to be consistent despite some shooting struggles the last couple games early. Then Devin had seven rebounds tonight, three offensive. He was the guy that New Orleans really struggled to contain him on the glass. Do you think this is the most comfortable he's looked so far in college? Yeah, I, I think with, with Devin, he, he's earned the right to play well with the way he's practiced the last last few weeks. And um, He's talented, there's, there's no question about it. And he came in with a physicality that you don't see from a lot of freshmen. So he's rebounded well in practice. Um, there's no surprise that he rebounded well uh, you know, tonight. And I think as he continues to grow and get better, you're gonna see the ball fall for him more. He's gonna create more opportunities offensively. But the biggest things for us are he's, he's gotten better defensively um, with his details. And I just, I think he was rewarded for the way he's practiced lately. And, you know, with freshmen, that's kind of what you want to see. And we've, you know, freshmen in our program have, we've seen jumps, you know, over the last few years from guys. And I think oftentimes we want to immediately compare guys to guys in the past. And everybody's journey and path as a freshman is different. And, you know, Devin has, like I said, earned it. And he's earned the right to play well. And hopefully he can continue doing that because him, you know, Scotty, like those those guys for us can be impactful, uh, you know, moving forward. I wanted to go back to Zed for a second, because uh, obviously when, when Felix comes back, he'll be, he'll go back to being, you know, he's been the top scorer off the bench for you guys. So is is it important for him to have a game like this where he gets a lot of looks from the inside, has an efficient night scoring in there to kind of go back to, to filling that sixth man role of, you know, bringing a lot of scoring off the bench? Yeah, Zed's, Zed scoring is really important for us, and I think his ability to draw fouls, you know, with his physicality is important for us. Um, and for us to have that kind of firepower checking into the game off the bench has been really valuable. Um, we felt like going into this game that this was probably more than some other some other nights that we needed to be aggressive, uh, feeding the ball inside. And we also felt like uh, with the way their defense is designed that he could get some looks behind the defense too off penetration. So. Um, he executed, you know, his job really well, and it certainly was, you know, 16 points in basically 17 minutes is um, is, is impressive. But his, his efficiency was good, and I felt like I felt like he played well off others uh, today. 
when you're uh, overseeing the office, but you're also overseeing kind of everything, how do you have to sort of compartmentalize what you are normally doing in a game and then taking on a little bit more responsibility? I mean, you talked about maybe delegating a little bit more to Netty, but like when things are struggling early offensively, how much are you trying to figure out like you normally would be if the offense isn't clicking and how much are you trying to look at both sides of the court? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good question. I think going into the game, you know, I, I certainly wanted to make sure I was doing my job from an offensive standpoint well and that we were prepared. And, and the great thing is that we, we had, you know, we had prepared well for the days leading up to it. But, um, man, head, head, co head coaching, there's some things that come with that, right? And it's, you gotta, you got to be doing a lot um, at the same time. But like coach does, you know, I think he trusts us. And when you're in that seat, you got to trust, trust the staff. And like I mentioned before, this is a talented staff and we're connected and we have great chemistry. Um, we have a lot of different experience. There's two former head coaches on the bench um, tonight. And so, you know, that knowledge that's there, there's, there's times where you got to be a great listener, you know, I think as a head coach, and there's, there's times that, you know, you got to have a great voice. And so no question in my mind that I ever feel like I needed to do anything more than, than trust, you know, trust just like we do every game as if Coach, Coach Holman was here. So that part, you know, honestly was easy. The substitutions were, that was a little different um, and, and managing that, but that was a collective effort too. You know, I think that, that was something we worked together on. And you did talk about the turnovers and that being a bit of an issue at times. Roddy seems to have had a bit of a problem with that the last couple of games. Now I think he had four tonight. And, uh, what is he kind of going through right now? It seems like he's, I don't know, maybe trying to force the issue a little bit too much. I know he can make plays, but what are you trying to coach him through right now to take care, better care of the ball? Yeah, there, there's multiple things there. I think one, there's some, there's some things he can do to tighten his handle a little bit. And, and, you know, he dribbles the ball high and away from his body sometimes too much in traffic. Um, some of them is, you know, He's, a, he's aggressive coming off ball screens, passing the ball, and, and we don't want him to lose that, but kind of getting him to you know, maybe progress to the second, second option is an area that we'll, we'll continue to get better at with film and, and in practice. But I think Roddy's aggressiveness is really important for us, obviously. Um, he's one of our very best playmakers and we need him to be aggressive. And some of that involves taking some chances, but I think we all feel like, and I think Roddy would, would own it as well. There's, there's probably two a game that don't need or, or shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Those are the two, you know, that we got to we got to fix. The four, you know, I don't I don't know that all four are necessarily all, all bad, but there's got to be a couple in there that, that we got to take care of. So we're maybe a four to two ratio instead of two to four. I don't know if you were aware, but today, so the United Nations actually made today uh, World Basketball Day, and I asked if that had done in this too. Just curious, uh, why are you grateful for the game, and how does the game of basketball really change the trajectory of your life? I appreciate that question. Um, certainly, you know, most people know my dad has coached high school basketball for a long time. And, um, from the time I could walk, I was around basketball and practice and basketball players and this this game um, has meant so much to me it's 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 something we've kind of rallied around as a family and so I immediately when I think about basketball I think about you know family um, when I think about basketball I think about all the relationships you know that I've been able to develop with coaches, players, um, and my best friends are, you know, have come about from basketball. Um, I just FaceTimed with Dwayne Washington yesterday. And like those, those, like those moments, because the intensity of basketball, the adversity of basketball, right? The ups and downs of, of the season, um, that creates a bond. And I think you look at like, you know, my, one of my favorite parts is seeing guys get better, seeing guys achieve their dreams, seeing guys hear their name called on draft night. Like that stuff is like, you, you can't, it's hard to fully explain what that can mean. And again, it's, it's surrounded. 
by basketball. And, and, and make no mistake, my life changed because of the people that I was around. Um, you know, in college, the coaches that I was around, I got saved in college, and I, and I wouldn't have in college if it weren't for my coaches. And so I met my wife here at the shop because I was leaving practice. So like it, it, this, this, the, this game has meant so much to me. Um, it's meant so much to my family. And I don't take for granted a single day that I get to come to work. Obviously being at, at The Ohio State is a big part of that, but just the game in general. Um, and I've, I've been able to travel all over the world. I've seen basketball break down barrier after barrier after barrier. You name the barrier, I've seen basketball break it down and create conversation and dialogue and friendship and relationship building. So yeah, might have been a little long-winded there, but hopefully you're getting a, getting a feeling for just how important this game is to me. It's, a, it's an honor to be able to, to be a part of it on a daily basis. All right, guys, thanks. Thank you.